Welcome to this video where we will take a look at reload alerts for ClickSense Enterprise on Windows. These alerts are generated by the Butler tool, Butler 5.0 to be exact. Most of these features that we will look at today uh, in this video were introduced in, in 5.0. Uh, we'll use alerts sent, to, uh, sent as emails to Slack to Microsoft Teams and as webhooks. So four different alert destinations will be covered. Let's start off by email. To the left, there is a Gmail client. And this is where um, the alerts will end up. In the upper right, we have the Butler running, well, soon at least. And lower right is the QMC of ClickSense Enterprise for Windows. And here we're running um, February 2021. So at the time, uh, as of right now, this is the most recent version of ClickSense Enterprise on Windows. Let's start by um, uh, kicking off the Butler tool itself. In this window, it started fine. We see that we have uh, version 5.0. And a few different things are done at startup. Let's put in some spaces there. Now, from the QMC, I will start a task, a reload task, that always fails. The underlying up is, is done so that the script is invalid. It always fails. So what we expect here is that um, an email will be generated and sent to the email account to the left. And that a Slack alert, a Slack message is sent to a Slack channel. That a Microsoft Teams message is sent and that an outgoing webhook is also generated. So let's see. Starting this task that always fails, we should expect to see some um, action in the Butler window itself. Right, so we have um, messages here saying basically that um, a failed reload was detected and that we're sending uh, messages through Slack, Teams, SMTP, which is email and webhook. And uh, at this point, we should have received an email. Indeed, we have. So, click sense, reload failed, reload of task failing. It looks good. And we can also use emojis in the subject, which is quite nice. And the email itself looks like this. Um, it's fairly extensive. It's, um, it includes everything in um, what you can find in the QMC, and then quite a bit more, actually. Um, the idea is that a sysadmin should be able to determine what went wrong just by looking at these emails or Slack messages or Teams messages. Uh, and in this case, we see that um, well, with things like uh, what server the reload was done on, um, how long did it take? Uh, what was the last message? What's the app ID and the task ID? Qu quite a few things. But the most important and useful thing is probably the, uh, the script log. And what's included here are the, the last 25 lines of the script log. And this is all configurable. Whether you want zero lines of the script log or five lines, you, if you want some some lines from the beginning of the script log as well as from the end. It's all configurable. Um, here we see that uh, the failure was due to uh, a remote server return an error not found. So we basically tried to make a REST call to get a CSV from somewhere, some server that didn't exist. And uh, if we didn't get the script log here, you would have to go into the QMC and look at the script log there. But they also flush from there quite often, uh, especially if you restart services or if you run another reload. In that case, you would have to go into the server, remote, remote desktop into the server, and um, try to find the correct script log there, which is very time consuming. So this is a much more effective way of um, informing sysadmins and developers that something went wrong. So at this point, this email was sent to 
a specific email address. address. But Butler also has a feature where these emails can be sent to the app owners. So each app in ClickSense uh, has an owner in the QMC. And uh, these app owners usually have email addresses associated with them. At least if um, the user directory is synced from an active directory, then the email address of the users are also included. There's no guarantee there is an email address for each user in, an, in, a, sen in a sense environment. Uh, but if there is an email address, you can optionally send this error email also to that user. Some This might be useful in some contexts and at some companies, um, maybe not for everyone. For example, if you have a system account or a service account owning all apps, then it does not make sense to send emails to that service account uh, when something fails. So this is the email. Uh, there are links here to the QMC and the hub, so you can go straight there if you want to. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's look at this Slack message it's right here. And it looks like this. And uh, it's the same information. It's the exact same information. It's formatted in a slightly different way. Uh, we get um, the script log. And um, because, because different templates are used to render the actual data coming in from Sense. The, the layout and the contents of these messages can differ from between email and Slack and Teams. So here we have, uh, in the Slack case, we don't have 25 lines of script log. Um, we have maybe the last 10 lines, looks like. Um, but the links to the QMC and the Hub, they're still there, and all the actual information is the same. But if we wanted to have much more um, a uh, basic Slack message. We can do that. Butler supports that. It's just a setting in the config file where you basically say that, give me a basic message. I don't care about this fancy formatting. I just want the basics. Then that's very easily done. And these, uh, if you want to customize the templates used for um, these Slack messages or Teams or email messages, they use a standardized, um, a shared template concept. Um, where um, you basically define what the message should look like and then Butler will insert actual data when reloads fail. And uh, moving on then to um, the Teams client. It looks like this. Sa once again, same information, in this time in a Teams format. Um, Emojis supported, um, you get the task name, the app name, and the script history once again. Here the uh, QMC and hub links are at the bottom, just formatting layout details that differ. Uh, the webhooks, finally. The webhooks are, uh, it's a way where Butler will call a predefined URL with the uh, the data relating to the failed reload, so it, it's it's a way for um, it's a way basically to forward reload failure information to some generic third party system that we don't right now know what it looks like. Um, in our case, the remote system in this case uh, it's a um, Node Red instance running on locally on this computer. So Node-RED here, if we're looking at now, is a visual development environment for uh, prototyping and, and building um, low coding applications. Some coding is required, but it's a lot of drag and drop. So here we have three different um, uh, HTTP endpoints that correspond to the outgoing webhooks from Butler. So Butler will call these endpoints and what we see here is the, um, the information sent from Butler to these webhooks. And it's once again, it's the same basic information. What we don't get here is um, the script logs, simply because it's a lot of information. It doesn't really um, 
it's not really practical to send this in a REST call. It could be possible, but for most use cases, it will not be relevant. So it's not included at this point. And um, right, so that's the failing reloads. Let's take a look at what um, aborted reloads look like. And uh, in some settings and companies, this may be of interest in others not. But this use case here is that when you have um, a running reload that someone aborts from the QMC, an alert can be triggered. And this can be enabled or disabled independently of um, failed reloads, failed reload alerts. So these are totally independent. Um, if we start now a reload that's more long running, it usually takes a few minutes to load this app. Uh, the app uh, basically crunches all data on all parking tickets in New York City for the period of a couple of years, quite a few of those tickets. And so it takes a while to, to reload. Uh, but we start that app here. It's started, that's good. Let's go back to the overview. And now let's stop this app and see what happens. Right away, within a second here, immediately we get a few new log lines um, in the Butler console, saying us, telling us that the app New York City parking tickets was aborted, sending reload abort notification to Slack, etc. And looking at the email client, uh, right, click sends reload aborted, reload task. This is the app name. Let's take a look. Once again, it looks very similar, simply because um, it was almost the same template used as for the reload failure alerts. The difference here is that we don't get any script logs, for example, simply because um, they don't exist yet. The uh, sense doesn't make them available for aborted tasks um, for some reason. But the, the general information is here, and we also see who, what user aborted the reload. In this case, it was me, and here's my username, and when it was done, and on what server the reload had been running. Same thing for, um, well, Teams in this case, we have a different channel for aborted reloads. Um, same basic information available, once again. And, uh, for Slack, we have a different channel where we see that it was me um, doing the aborting the reload and uh, what server, etc., it ran on. Okay, let's. Oh yeah, the um, it, the webhook, outgoing webhooks. So. That was the last piece. We see that the click sense reload was aborted and information about the task and the app and everything. Also available as webhooks. And this concludes the demo of um, reload alerts with Butler. Thanks for watching.